does NASA have any plans for reusability in the future? The idea of a completely expendable rocket bugs me. The crew module is the only section recovered. Um, they don't and they won't um, because I don't think, I think SLS is the end of the road for NASA being in the booster business. SLS gets a ton of flack um, and yeah, some of it's definitely deserved, um, but I think that people forget a lot of the context in which the origins of the vehicle like came to being. Um, this rocket, this, this rocket started over 10 years ago before reusable rockets were like, anybody thought that was possible for one. Yeah. Um, you know, it was kind of, a, it was all, it's been theoretical since, well, for like 30 years prior to that, you know, the first reusable rocket wasn't until like 1990 or 91. Um, and it was suborbital and, and you have to remember also NASA as a agency, it's a federal agency in order for them they need they need they're extremely risk averse they can't they, they be mainly because now of what happened with challenger and columbia the next crew vehicle needed to be incredibly safe and needed to work so and it was also the other argument of well we have this built-in infrastructure with the shuttle program um you know lots of talent and jobs and people and knowledge that they want to capitalize on so the obvious answer at the time was trying to create like a, a frankenstein beefier shuttle um because the space shuttle in the end was not was not safe um now fast forward 10 years 10 over 10 years later when the vehicle is now operational and we know it works the, the industry has changed dramatically in the last 10 years in a way that it hadn't done in the previous 30 or 40 really so it gets a bad rap uh but it but it's it's not entirely its fault because this sls in of itself is a good rocket it's just behind its time um i don't see sls it, it's it, it's gonna fly for probably the next 10 years but when we're looking when nasa announced their on um, the flight cadence between now and 2031 there's 10 flights manifested for sls including artemis one um that just happened um i would be surprised beyond that if sls flew again um it might um but uh there's a lot of there's a lot we need to see proven out mm -hmm. um starship is not going to be doing uh nasa ascent and descent for a long time um for space missions for lunar missions at least um and the way the architecture is designed uh uh for now is it's going to be uh, lunar orbit rendezvous with the lander, um, not Earth orbit rendezvous with the lander um, for a variety of reasons. Uh, so NASA wants to keep the crew as safe as possible. And one way of doing that is keep it in the same vehicle from ascent until lunar orbit. Um, so the architecture I see changing at some point for Artemis, uh, for the Artemis program, but it's just gonna take some time to get there. So we just have to live with it. SLS is here um, and just because NASA may cancel the program doesn't mean they can just take that money and put into something else. That money is just goes back to Uncle Sam to reallocate. <laughs> so you just kill a perfectly good rocket that's being invested into NASA and into the people, into the technology that we want to see invested in. Because you can't just be like, oh, I want to take that $2 billion and give it to some other company. No, it's not how it works. Um, so it's it's a means to an end it's a gap it's a gap filler that's kind of way i'm looking at it right now um and uh so yeah the answer is no they don't and but nasa very much they've walked the walk and talked up talk in a lot of ways and then their whole the whole career the whole the career the whole span of nasa is like they're they've rail, they've laid the railroad tracks for private companies to follow um and this is one other way of them doing that they proved that out with the space station you know there'll be a private space stations coming online um they proved it out with starliner and dragon um those vehicles are built off a lot of the learnings from the shuttle apollo mercury and gemini programs um i mean people don't realize that components of dragon flew on the space shuttle before the space shuttle tr uh retired uh to test them out before they flew dragon for the first time so like Dragon's roots are in the shuttle program in a lot of ways. Um, so, uh, and then even Starship's roots are in the program, or have roots in the shuttle program in a lot of ways with the tiles, because the people who are making the Starship tiles are the same people that were making the shuttle tiles. Same, same literal building. So, um, 
so anyways, uh, yeah, SLS, not reusable, not awesome, but it's it's a means to an end. So um, I think when we're looking in 2033, the, the, the ecosystem, the, the, mar- the, the it's going to, I can't imagine how much different it's going to be. The amount of companies that are coming, on, are coming online and some are failing, but that's just kind of like this high, it's a super high risk business. So uh, just looking forward to seeing, you know. Oh my God. We're just at the the beginning, I feel like, and I, I'm really excited that this is, you know, my channel and that I was able to quit and do this full time. You know, I have a little hiccup with my leg right now, but it's like, there's so much to cover. It's it's honestly too much for, for one person. And so, um, but it's exciting. It's really, really exciting. Um, you know, the, the theme of SciTech this year was turning sci-fi into reality and like, we're totally, about hopefully about to see that especially with something like starship